Okay. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another streaming event. So today what we are going to be going through and doing is making a very simplistic um, platforming game. So before I go ahead and start, I want to make sure that everyone can uh, hear me okay. Um, make sure there's no problems with anything. Um, and then, yeah, if there's uh, anything wrong with the stream, just let me know, and I can try my best to fix it. Fan is currently going. That should shut off in a little bit here. Um, so if you're interested, uh, I've already gone ahead and created a Visual Studio solution for everything. Uh, you can find it down below in the previous streams under Jumper. There's a GitHub repo link there. Um, so you can go ahead and in there. And what this is right now is it's just a clone of the um, roll call one that we did previously. So to kind of go through that again, let's go through and uh, play it real quick. You can see that it's just a simple top-down RPG with uh, tech support and stuff. We can do different tiles and stuff and have them have different effects and all of that. Uh, we can come over here and help her take these guys down by shooting them. And that guy takes three hits, this guy takes one. And then of course we can save, save the game. We have saves, uh, very, very basic save game support. So if we close it and we open it back up, you'll notice that we end up in the same location. So today what I want to do is I want to go through and I want to transform this into a very, very simple platformer. So um, it might sound like platformers are a little bit easier to make, but they're actually a little trickier. Um, and part of that has to do with the physics side of things. So real quick, before we even get into all of that, let's go through and open up this repo repository um, and we're gonna go in here and we're gonna edit our basic level so let's come in here I think we put it under graphics and then test so we'll come in here and we will open this up with sublime instead um, and once we get that opened up we can see here we have our original level data and we'll come in here to maps and we'll open this with sublime as well so what we're going to do now is we're going to modify our uh, map format from before. So if you remember correctly, we had our tile list, the maps that connect it, so uh, top, down, left, right, and then, uh, hey, neat carbon. Um, we had tile size, and then we had how big the level was in tiles. And then finally, we had the uh, actual layout of our level. So let's go through now, and we're going to open up tile, and we're going to go ahead and... Um, modify this just a little bit. So in a top-down RPG we have it all looking like this. What we want to do this time around is we want to go through and we want to uh, effectively go through and delete everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all of that and for a RPG the big thing difference between that and a, or a, sorry, a top-down platformer is you're going to only have tiles underneath the player and where the player can walk. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add some uh, limits here. We'll make sure that we uh, get all the edges. I really wish that there was a way to do this better. And then go through and erase these. So what we'll have here is a... Um, a simple little world that we'll be able to walk through. Um, the players should, uh, cool, glad to hear there's no lag today. Um, so hopefully this will be a little bit smoother than previous streams. Um, so going on, we'll have a simple little world, the player will spawn somewhere up here and then he'll fall down and he'll hit those blocks and he will collide with them. So what we need to do now is we need to come here and, uh, again, I'm just going to use this same format from before to keep things easy. Um, we'll copy that, and if we load up the uh, game now, there it is. We should see. Let's go through and delete our save data real quick as well. Let's delete that. And now when we uh, start it back up, we will start in that oddly looking room. Or so I thought. Let's try this again. Did I modify the wrong one? I did. 
So I um, these are the files from before. So what we need to do is we need to come here and open up our other ones. Bring up the Twitch stream. Sorry guys, I'm a little uh, disorganized at the moment because I've got all sorts of uh, I've got all sorts of windows open from another game I'm working on. So come into here. We're looking for JSON. I'm gonna open up that. Then uh, let's go through. We want tiles here, 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 here. And then we can go ahead and get rid of the ones in between. Be fine, we'll just go through and do that in a sec. So now we have our basic uh, little world. You'll notice we're not colliding with anything though. That's because uh, we didn't add support for those kinds of tiles. So let's go through now and uh, pretty it up just a little bit. Go ahead and do uh, these at the bottom. Make it look a little nicer. We need to we should probably go online and find actual platformer tiles to make this look less ugly. So let's go through. Uh, we'll do that later. So we have that all now, and we're going to go through real quick and just rename this to Jumper so that it looks a little better. And then we'll go through and update the main menu real quick as well. So let's go to main menu. Uh, it's going to be called Jumper. And where do we set? We'll set this instead of blue, let's set it to orange. Or is there no orange? There's no orange. How about scion? So we have our new game jumper. And this is where we're gonna start off from. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and set this up. So Big things to note. We still have all of our uh, original stuff, but we're going to modify it just slightly. Um, the big thing that we're going to do that's going to change now is we're going to need to go into our main guy. So main guy originally um, can move up, down, left, and right. So now we really only want him, though, to be able to move uh, left and right. The other thing is we're going to want to start him in the center of the screen. So let's go ahead and do that by deleting a uh, test save. And that'll go ahead and make sure that he starts out in the center area. So we'll come here. So we have that. And now what we're going to want to do as well is we're going to want to make sure that if the player reaches on um, the top or the bottom that we don't go through and load up a new section of the level. So let's go ahead and remove that. And finally what we're going to want to do as well is um, we're going to want to make sure that he can collide with the uh, proper blocks. So you'll notice that the tiles we're using are one instead. So we're going to just move that there real quick. And what will happen now is we'll only be able to move left and right and he should go ahead. Yep, we can't move up and down, and we can move left and right, and collisions don't quite work still. So let's go through and see what we did here. So let's see when we collide what happens. You'll notice it's just reloading that. So let's go through and again delete the save, and let's double check. Tiles, if that should have been the case. Ah, that's why. That 
was the wrong section to be looking. Keep that at three, because that's for our NPCs, which we'll get to later. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say if it equals one. Now, this is going to be uh, a bit different as a result of it of the gameplay style. We're going to need to handle our tile collisions differently. And we'll get to that in a second. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get it working with a very, very basic thing from what we had before. So let's go through. We'll move all the way to the right. And now we have our collisions working. So the next step now is we need to add some kind of gravity. So let's go through and see where we should do that exactly. So we have our x and our y velocities, we have our directions and all that. However, um, well, I guess we can go ahead and keep that for now. However, we don't want to have um, any kind of y direction. So what we're actually going to do is we can remove this altogether. And the way the direction is going to be t determined is based on um, is effectively going to be based on whether or not which way we're facing, so left or right. So we really only need a boolean for that. However, I am going to add in. Um, I am going to keep it a full 360 degrees because that is going to allow us to do some neat tricks like jumping and such. So what we're going to need is if this velocity dot x is greater than zero. Actually, we probably should have just kept that from before. So this will go ahead and it'll let us use our direction still. We're going to just keep it like that. Um, some stuff will change, but you'll see that in a second. So the next thing we need to do is the y velocity. Now the y velocity um, is going to be affected by gravity. And the way that's going to work is that as the character is uh, not touching in the ground or anything, um, his velocity will be consistently increased until it is greater than or equal to a uh, certain fall velocity. So what we're going to do then is we're going to say if this velocity dot y is less than, we'll go with like, I don't know, 10. That's going to be too fast. We'll go with um, at most he can fall at 1.5 um, floats. Um, and it's hard to explain the units for this. It really is kind of a unitless vector to be specific. Um, so there's not a whole lot you can do. And what we're going to do is every frame that he is falling, we're going to add that on so we can have that. Now the next step is that um, we're going to move this up a little bit actually. And so now the next step is to go through and check what exactly is going on with the collisions. So we're going to move this real quick. Uh, come down here, and we're going to do, here we are. So we have this from before where we had our collision checks. So what we want to do is we want to move him to the left. If he collides to the left, right. If he collides to the eh, left, if he collides to the right, right to the, if he collides to the left. And if he has a collision on top, we actually want to set his velocity to zero. And you'll see why, but basically um, what's going to happen is if he hits the top, then we want him to just kind of stop and then start falling um, rather than pass through the object. And so this will move him out of the direction there, and then this will make sure that he starts falling. And when he is going down, his velocity should be equal to zero as well there. And again, move him up a little bit so that he doesn't do that. And that should, in fact, work pretty well. Um, it'll still have some bugs. And you'll notice he is kind of hopping around there. Now let's go into why exactly that is. So the reason for that is because we're moving him up a little bit each frame. And we actually don't want to do that because when we move him up, he'll start falling again. So we do that. And now he's stable. And we can, of course, come over here. And you can see that we have a basic element. So next step, let's go ahead and add support for a jump key. Now we're just going to make the jump key, in this case, um, the up key. So uh, what we need to do is do if sf keyboard 
is key press sf keyboard key up. Then we need to have him jump there. The other thing we want to check is we also want to check um, that his velocity is uh, less than or equal to zero. That way we already know he's not in the air. Um, and you could also do this um, with a jump variable. That's another good way to do it because, you know, if he falls off a ledge, you want him to be able to jump. We're going to be kind of lazy about that right now and go ahead and just do this. Now what we're going to do is we are going to make his y velocity equal to negative 1.25f. I want to see if this works the way I think it will. Yep. So you'll notice that when we set his velocity, okay, we set his velocity to a static value. Notice that he actually smoothly goes up. He does, the velocity gets added onto the position, but he doesn't just like jerk up. He actually slowly moves up. Now this is kind of a cool little thing. Um, basically the reason that it's doing that is because he is actually, um, He's actually be having his velocity uh, slow down each time. And so the result of that oops, we can do that actually. Um, and so the result of that is that he has this very smooth streamlined jump. So you'll notice that it's a very smooth jump. There's not a whole lot of like weird stuff to it. And of course you can speed up that jump too by uh, making it a little bit of a bigger value. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that, and you'll notice he'll jump a little bit higher and he'll jump a little bit faster. So that's kind of nice. We already have the ability to go through and actually add in platforms and such, which is pretty cool. Um, but there's a lot more that we can do with this. So because of how we set up everything before, we can actually detect um, up, down, left, right, all of that. So let's go through now. And what we're going to do is we're going to make these special blocks. Um, and what these special blocks are going to allow us to do is jump up through them and land on top of them. So what we need to do now is we need to come back here to our map and we need to paste that in and we'll come back to the game now. So what we need to do is we only need to check for the down collision with those new tiles. So we'll do or and that tile number as we can see is right Should have been one two zero one two three or one two three four. It's not showing. Let's double check that, that didn't work. So now what we need to do is change that to 4, so there's that. Now we can land on top of them, and if we jump up, you'll notice that we can pass right through them and then land on top of them. And there's a few little bugs like that where you'll uh, end up like that. Um, the reason for that is because we are checking for specifically anywhere under the player. What we sh could do is we can make the tiles smaller and that would help that. Um, I'm not really going to worry too much about that. Um, the other thing is that we need a jump value for that. This works for now though, um, but we can do nice little tricks like that. Um, so now that we have that working, let's go on to another big part of most platformers, which is uh, scrolling. So to do that, what we need to do first of all is we need to make our level bigger. So um, what you'd want to do to make that a little bit better for the jump is you'd probably want to use 
smaller values for this, which will make him jump higher, but then, you know, he won't fall as fast. Um, overall, it's more of a combination of the fact that we aren't, effectively because we aren't, we're, we're adding on a lot of gravity. So what we need to do to get him to jump faster is we need to add that on, and then we have to increase his jump speed. So right now he can't jump as high because we increased how much gravity is enforcing on him. So what you'd really want to go through and do then is you'd want to update that to like a 5 or something, I'm sure. So basically by increasing the, uh, the acceleration downward and then increasing his jump value, you end up with a much smoother jump, as you can see. Now the other thing to note is that um, we maximized his fall speed right here. So what you really want to do as well is increase that, and this will give an overall sm uh, smoother feeling to uh, jumps. So you'll notice now he falls a little bit faster, and we could probably increase that further um, to make it a little bit smoother. Let's go ahead and just increase that to 3 and see how that looks. So now what you'll notice is he falls a lot faster. He's got a much smoother animation for it. Um, it's a very quick and responsive jump, which is kind of nice for something faster. And of course, we can increase his speed as well. Um, by increasing his speed left and right, you'll get a, an overall faster feeling. And that's kind of what a lot of platform gamers, uh, platformer games have, is this overall like very quick and uh, jumpy feeling. And that's kind of what we want. So, um, so yeah, what you'd want to do to smooth out jumping is basically adjust uh, a faster velocity, also adjust a uh, higher fall maximum, and also increase the uh, jump velocity, because the jump velocity is going to be partially canceled out by the uh, gravity. So you need to make sure that your jump value is high enough, otherwise he won't jump high enough. So that's one big thing there. Um, the other thing is that we also want to go through and... Um, so we've got that all going. Now the big thing that we want to do is we want to go through, and this is kind of a neat thing you can do, is you if you want to add a variable jump height. So what we can do is we can say... Um, so... The way that we can do this is we can go ahead and let's go through and modify. We're going to add variable jump height now. So let's go over to main guy. Now this is where we will need a boolean for a um, you know jump button. And what this is going to do is when he jumps the first time, it'll set to uh, 1. We're going to make this an integer instead. And you'll see why in a second. So int jump. And jump by default is just going to be 0. And then um, we're going to set it to 1 for a uh, very small initial jump. Jump 0. So um, for an initial jump like that, we're going to set it there. And else if jump equals 1 and dot y is, le is greater than, let's go with uh, negative 7. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to take out a little bit more. We're going to take out like 0.25, I guess, each time. And set that to 2, I think. I think that'll work. We need to make sure that when he's done falling, his jump is set back to zero. And what we'll go ahead and do now is we'll add in another 1.25. I know there's a way to do this. I'm trying to remember the math behind it. I haven't made a platform in a long time. Okay. 
So, you'll notice now he has infinite jumps. The reason for that is we want to um, go ahead and to negative 7.0f, and then this jump is equal to 2. So that'll go ahead and set up the jump uh, to have a maximum. So now we can do that. We can do a small one. And the other thing we'll want to do is we'll go ahead and in decrease this to uh, 3 again. And that's going to make his initial jump smaller. But then you can hold it for this giant jump. And you don't have to hold it all the way. It's got a vari variable height. Um, and of course that's a little tall, so what we'll go ahead and do is max that at 5. So if you just tap the jump key, you'll notice he has this very small little jump, and if you hold it, and that needs to be adjusted to 5. There we go. So normal jump is very small, and then if you hold it, you'll get this nice big jump. So we have that. Um, that's of course useful. So the other thing that we'll want to go ahead and do now is we're going to probably want to have some kind of um, speed up. So what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll also add in SF keyboard is key press SF keyboard key. And we're going to just use the left shift key and the right shift key. And what this will do is uh, set the speed to like 4 instead. Otherwise, it's equal to 2, right? I think, or was it 3? Yeah, it was 2. So now we have this nice little jump. And you'll notice that um, as well, he is able to uh, jump in midair a little bit as well. Um, and if we hold down the shift key, he goes much faster. If we hold, release it, he'll slow down. Um, and of course, what we can also do is we can uh, increment the speed, kind of like in Mario when he starts running a little bit faster. Um, he has that build up to it. You could do that in a similar way with the um, with a run integer instead. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that real quick. So we have jump and then this run is equal to zero. And what this is going to do is um, run zero. And we need to go ahead and add that there. And then if the run is zero and this speed is less than 4.0, then what we'll add, do is we'll add on 0.25f and then we'll say else if and this is going to be the same thing as here so we can actually just copy that except there's going to be one crucial change which is uh, is greater than or equal to that then this run is equal to 0 is equal to 1 and then the final thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come here and say else if not either of those. And the last thing we'll also want to do is set the run back to zero. So now if we come over here and we play it, we'll have this uh, nice little increase. And it's not very noticeable. Um, part of that is because of how how fast it increases. So let's go ahead and just really slow that down so you can see that. Um, so we'll come here and click play, and then we'll run normally, and you'll see that as we hold it down, he progressively gets faster. And of course, we could do the exact same thing, but with slow down. So we'll say if that and this run is greater than or and 2.0 F then we'll just go through and we will subtract 0 0.01 and of course we might want to make that a little bit faster for slowdown so that uh, it slows down faster 
but you know it'll have the same ideas you want to check that his speed is um, greater than 2 and then start subtracting things off of it. So now if we come here, we can start out at a specific speed, we can run away and speed up, and as we stop, it'll slow down. So we have all of that. Um, we have basic jumping and stuff. Let's go ahead now and update the gun. So what we need to do for bullets is we need to go through and have the direction of them be in specific ways. They should only be left or right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and get rid of the Y velocity portions. So what this means is that um, if he's facing the left, it's or to the right, it's going to be 0. And if he's facing to the left, it's just going to be uh, 180. And so this will let us go through and do some neat little tricks. So now we can go through and fire off bullets in either direction. We have our basic shooting abilities now. So let's go through now and fix a few other things. Um, first off, let's go ahead and just clean up the level a little bit. We'll go ahead and get rid of these for now. And we'll bring those back in a little bit. Um, I just want to focus on making the level a little bit more stable to start. So now that we have that, let's go through and click play. You can see we have our basic ability to go through and walk through a level. We can speed up. And of course, we could add in pitfalls and such. Um, but we'll worry about that in a little bit. So the next big thing that we're going to want to do is add in scrolling. So what we need to do is we need to go through and again, update this to be a little bit bigger. So now what we're going to do is we're going to double the uh, width of the level. And what this is going to let us do is it's going to let us, um, it's going to give us the ability to uh, scroll through the level. Because right now it's a pretty small size. Um, what we want to do is we want to go through and make it so that we can scroll this. So let's go through, we'll come in here, we will just delete these, and we will delete these on the side here as well. So there's our basic little level. Um, it's bigger than the window, so that means we'll be able to, uh, that means we'll be able to go through and scroll through it instead. So what we're gonna do now is come over to here, and we are going to go in and open up test JSON 2. And we're just going to copy this and um, paste that there. So now that we have that, what we need to do is we need to double that up. So now, if we come over to here, we render this, you'll notice that it goes obviously off screen a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to move the screen a specific way, and we want to move all of the tiles with that. So what we're going to do, and this is going to be um, a much, much trickier thing to do. So we basically what we have to do is we have to go through and scroll everything to a specific side. So what we need to do is we need to come over to our map, which I believe is right in here. And we have our map. What this does is it goes through and it draws everything to the texture and then the texture is set to the sprite. So what we can do though is this sprite, we're just gonna do this real quick, uh, set position, and actually what we'll do is we'll just move. Um, we'll move, let's say, negative 256, 0F, zero, 0. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna move the um, map to the left a little bit. And you'll notice that it goes ahead and it scrolls it. So this actually lets us go through and do some really, really nice things because you see we already have the map in here for the um, main guy. So what we can do now is we can say, okay, if our position, so let's go ahead and do if this get position dot x. 
plus, and we're going to add a small boundary outside of the player. Um, that's going to be, let's go with 256. That sounds like a pretty good number. Then this map move, and we're going to want to move that by um, 1. And what we're also going to do is going to move this guy by 1. Um, backwards as well. That way he doesn't keep moving. So let's go ahead and just see how that works out real quick. So we come in here, we have this, and you'll notice that it's automatically moving to the right. Now the reason for that is because our position is apparently off a little bit. So let's go ahead and do just 64 instead. Hopefully that won't be as big and we'll work out a little better. Oop, nearly forgot. Greater than this get global bounds dot width. And what we actually want is that. So what this is going to do now, now we can add that 256 back. So we'll go through and add that there. So basically if the right side of our sprite plus a you know, invisible boundary of 256 is greater than the window size, then we want to scroll the entire level. So now if we come over here and we do that, you'll notice that he is able to be moved. The final thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use the speed again. So again, this is going to need to be the absolute position of the speed of the character. And we need to make sure that we also do this um, for the level, because the level should move at the same rate as the player. So now as we go through and we do that, you can see that our level moves with us. And of course, that's still a pretty small boundary. Um, we could go ahead and probably up that to about 512 and still have that be OK. Um, so we can go through now and now we have a nice little boundary of where we can do so. Now there's going to be one little problem, I'm going to show that real quick, and that's that when we get to the end of the level, um, it actually runs into this issue. So there's two little things to note. First of all, notice that when we collide with this, we aren't actually hitting the wall, um, and that we can kind of just pass right through it. Also notice that there's no end. Um, this is caused by the fact that we're not keeping track of the scroll value, and we need to do that. We need to go through and keep track of the scroll value, and when we do things like check for collisions and such, we need to make sure that we do so with the, um, with the position of the player. So this is kind of where things get really, really tricky now. So you'll notice that um, our check collision method, we pass this in. We need to have all entities have a scroll value that is updated based on their uh, literal position as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to do a uh, float vector sf vector 2f scroll. And what this is going to be is it's going to be a scroll value. Oh, that should not be a float, it should be that. There we go. So this is going to be a, a scroll value that we'll be able to use to track how exactly we're moving through. So now what we need to do is we need to come back down here and we need to also increment the scroll value. So we're going to do scroll.x plus equals uh, this speed. And we're going to increment that by the absolute value of the speed actually. And this is going to make sure that we have a proper scroll x value. So now what we need to do is we need to come back up to here and all of our collisions should check with that scroll position as well. So what we need to do now is we need to make sure that um, we first update the position with the scroll. I'm going to be kind of lazy about this, but it'll, uh, uh, it'll work out a little bit better in the end. So this Whoops. Entity scroll. And that should have been there. Let's see here. Maybe we just need to make that public then. We'll go through and do that. And what this is going to do is it's going to move the entity, and then we're going to move this as well. 
uh, actually I don't need to do that. So we move the entity by the scroll position, and then at the very end we want to make sure that we uh, return that we move it back. So what we need to do now is move based on the negative. And that should work. I don't th I think they check for that. Yeah, cool. So what this will do is it'll move it based on the scroll and then move it back to the left. Um, this will go through and update for all of our things because it's uh, you know object oriented. So we don't have to update anything else. That should in theory work. Um, we'll go ahead and give it a test run in just a second. Um, the last thing I want to do though is I want to make sure that we updated that properly. So we update the scroll there. So let's go ahead and see how this works. Now if we go through and we do this, we can come all the way over here. and our collisions work. So the last thing we want to do is we want to make sure that when we hit the edge of the screen um, that we stop scrolling. So what we need to do is we need to say if that and um, this hit position x plus this scroll dot x is less than and what this is going to do is it's going to need to check map get uh, get global bounds dot width. So basically we just want to make sure that we are uh, less than the width. And so now if we go through and we do this, we can speed this up a little bit. And that did not quite work. Let's see why. So let's see what the width is first. So the width is showing. Let's go through real quick. See out. Come here. And that should have worked but it did not. So let's see what our position is. Let's go through real quick and we will just go ahead all the way to the end of the map and we will see what goes on. Oops. Let's uh, print that out on a new line. Check something real quick, guys. Make sure I'm not going to destroy my new computer. Ooh, yikes. That's not good. CPU is very high right now. Let me close some stuff real quick. Sorry, guys. Did not realize my computer was freaking out that bad. Yikes, that's not good. Let's see what is causing this. Well, and turn down oh, temperature in here. Hopefully that won't come back on either now because I've set it up to be nice and warm. So hopefully the fan won't come on. This will be a much quieter video. Whew. That was scary for a second there. All right. Whew. Okay. So hopefully that'll go through and that'll be a little bit more stable now. Uh, not sure why my computer got that hot. Whew, that was kind of scary though. Okay, so there's that. 
And real quick, I also want to make sure that I put in here a sleep five. Let's increase that, and we'll leave that as is. So hopefully now my computer won't go into overboard mode. Let's go ahead and just load this up real quick. Seems to be a little bit better now. Cool. So there's that. Um, okay. So there's all of that. Whew. Sorry about that. Okay. So now we have all of that. Um, our basic scrolling stuff works. Let's come back to main guy and get him to not be all the way up. Oh, not need to open that. should be much better off now. Okay, so we have our positions there. Let's go ahead and check what our scroll offset is saying it is. So we'll come here, place that. Oh, that's why, because our scroll X should also subtract out the um, screen width. So what we're going to do is we are going to, oh, that's why. So that minus window get size. So we need to take out the x value from the screen because the screen after it is, uh, there we go. So we have all of that. So let's go through now and let's get rid of this. And what we also want to do is we want to do the same thing but moving to the right. So what we do is we take out this and we set that to be minus and that should be less than zero is greater than zero. Then in this case, we want to move everything to the right. And we want to subtract from the scroll value. So we'll go through and we will see how this looks. So now if we come back this way, you'll notice that we can uh, scroll left and right. So we have basic scrolling all set. The last thing that we'll want to do is we'll also want to do the same thing for X and Y. And one other thing to note is that because our position, our initial position got changed, when we load up the game and we're at a different position, it kind of scrolls to it. Um, an easy way to fix that is to set it up initially up here. So what we can do is we'll just come over here, and what we're going to do first is we're going to do the same thing but for the Y's. So let's go through and update the Y uh, scrolling. So that should be height, Y, Y, and then come here and do height, and do Y. So now we have that, and we want to do the same thing for down here. And this time, because the window is smaller uh, height-wise, we'll want to do 256 instead of uh, 512. That'll make sure that everything looks a little bit better. And this time around, we're going to make sure that we update the Ys for everything instead. And then come here. And then do the 
same thing for that. And then we're just going to copy paste this and then remove out that negative and remove out the negatives from there. And yes, so there's all of that. And this will go ahead and be able to scroll the uh, window up and down as well. You won't be able to see that right now, obviously, because of the fact that we are, um, whatchamacallit, the fact that we are, uh, we have a fairly small map. So let's go through, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and just scroll to the offset of the player. Um, so what this means is... We simply want to scroll the window size. And this should actually be in our INIT method. Um, do we have an INIT method? We did not add one there. So let's go ahead and just give him access to the render window. Under window, window, and we'll just do that. Make things easy. So there's that. We'll need to, of course, go back over here and rebuild this because he needs access to the window. There we go. So now, what'll happen is when this game starts up. Oops, so the last thing we have to do is we have to change these two wall loops. Uh, what this will do is it'll let us go through and um, update everything before the game even uh, is shown to the player. So we go through and we do that, and we have everything all set. So now it just automatically appears there. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and make a bigger level. Um, we will go ahead and make sure that it is... Uh, we'll double the size of everything, and we'll just copy this. And then we will select all of these out. save this as a test 3 file. And now if we come over to here and we open up test test 3 4 Now we come over here, load this up, and you'll notice that we fall for a little bit, and then once we get there, we're done. So the final thing to note is that he fell a little bit quicker than, um, he fell a little bit quicker than it caught up with him. Um, so what we want to do, the reason for that is we want to make sure that we add on um, the velocity from there. So we want to make sure that he is falling at that correct speed. So what we'll do is we will go through and plus this velocity dot y. And that'll go ahead and make sure that we um, are caught up with everything properly. So there's that. He's got that little flicker there. Um, the reason for that is, um, again, we're kind of adjusting things and then going back. So in order to fix that, um,
Yeah, there's not a whole lot I'm going to try and do on that because that's not really a big deal. Um, so we have all of that now. Let's go ahead now and add in a few more tiles just to make things interesting. What we'll do is we'll add some blocks uh, here. And then erase those and then come here. We'll add some like little stairs here. Them, make them a little lower and then down here we'll add in some more so now let's go back to that and if we load that up we have some nice little stairs and we can of course fall and jump back up And of course we can climb our way through levels now. And of course we still have all of our uh, weapons from the previous game. So you can't really see them because it's a black background, but it's there, I promise. So there's a little bit of a better view. So, there is all of that. Now, let's go ahead now and add in um, some backgrounds. So the big thing to notice right now is that it's kind of land, it's just got a back background nothing special going on um, what we'll want to do now is we'll want to go through and update the map with some kind of background um, so let's go through and what we can do actually to make this even better is we will go through and add in multiple backgrounds to the game and what this will allow us to do is to scroll them at different speeds and do what's called parallax scrolling um, it's a pretty simple concept. Um, basically, you scroll the backgrounds at different speeds. It comes out with different effects. So your further away objects scroll more slowly than the objects that are close. Um, it creates a really, really nice effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to have each map have multiple things. And what we need to do in order to do that is we're going to have to change around how our maps are laid out. So let's come here and let's go ahead now and... Oh, this is going to be a little trickier to do, but it should work. So let's go ahead now, and we'll just leave that as that. Uh, no, we don't want to do that. So in order to do this right, we have to go through and actually create a sprite object within this instead. And this kind of makes things a little bit trickier as a result, but it'll be okay in the end. So... Let's come here, and this sprite is equal to new SF sprite. And then we need to come down here. And delete that. And now we have to deal with a few more things. So we have to come here and have our map actually render with the window instead, which is going to change things up a little bit. So we need a render function. Global bounds does not need to be changed. And get global bounds, if I'm not mistaken, just returns a float rect. Yep. Okay. So there's that. So 
So what we're doing is we're just going to go through and add in a few of these um, to our uh, We're just going to add in a few things here. Um, the one thing you notice I haven't added yet is the move. And there's a very specific reason for this. So move, what it takes in, is it's going to take have a um, hex float y version and a void move sf vector 2f It. And these are basically going to look like this. So this will move the sprite. have pretty much the same effect as before. Um, nothing really changes a whole lot, but it makes it a lot more flexible for us, which is something we want. So let's go through now and add in a second sprite to there. So the first sprite is just going to be our um, tiles. And the tiles is basically nothing special. It's you know just the tiles that we're rendering from here. And we'll set that there, take that there, there, and there, and there. So we have all of our uh, tile system. The other sprite that we're going to want, though, is we're going to want one for the background. Now, the background is going to be a completely different guy. So. This is going to move at a different speed and everything from our uh, tiles version. So let's see here. So we of course need to set a texture. We need to get the bounds trees. We also need to uh, move it at a different rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to do. Uh, move at x and we're going to multiply it for now by a static value it's going to move at 75% uh, of the speed of the uh, normal background and we also need to make sure that we draw it now we have to draw this first so that our uh, tiles get drawn on top of it that and finally we need to delete it Okay, so we have all of that. So the next step now is we need to um, load in our background file name. So we'll add that there, and we'll come over to our load method in here, and we'll update, update this. So what this is going to do is we're also going to need to come down here and have an SF texture. background texture we will also need to create here and finally we need to make sure we load that Set texture to this 
background texture. And then we reference that, and that will allow us to go through now and load a background image. So let's come here, and what I'm going to do is I am just going to open up Paint, and I'm just going to create a very minimalistic background. So our normal size as of right now is Size. The full size not in there. Try image width. Okay, so we have to actually calculate this. So the tiles are each 64 by 64. There's 40 tiles for the width, so we need that to be 256 or 2560. And then we have 24 for the height, which is 1536. And what we're going to do is we're going to really quickly just fill this with that. And we're going to just draw some very simple clouds. We need to make sure we fill that with a solid color. So we'll just draw some clouds. Beautiful coder art. And this will be our BB. And then we will load from graphics slash bg.png. Come here. And now we have our very basic background. And you'll notice that because it's moving slower, it's got this almost uh, depth to it, which is kind of neat. Um, we can, of course, slow it down even further to uh, further increase that effect. So we'll go through and we'll do that real quick. So now it looks very depth-like. You'll notice that the clouds have a lot more depth, uh, that it looks like they're much, much further away. Um, so little things like that can really go a long way. Um, so yeah. There is a very minimalistic uh, game. We can shoot bullets and everything. Um, so let's go through now, and let's add in our NPCs again. So um, what we can do is we can actually do some really, really cool stuff with this. We could actually make the NPCs move and everything. Um, you would add in gravity similar. Um, I'm not going to go through and do that. I'm going to focus mainly on just loading them in real quick. So let's go through now and bring this up. We'll add in a uh, simple NPC1. We'll add him uh, or her right here. We'll go through and add NPC2 down here, mob1 there. And you'll notice that not a lot of the code is changing. Um, the reason for this is that there's really not a whole lot need of a need to. Um, it would kind of just be more repetitive, repetitive than anything because all of our code is actually going to work as is, for the most part. Um, there might be a few tweaks we need, but really, there's not a whole lot. Um, let's go through now and play, and let's find out... Oops. Did our NPCs not get loaded? got turned into rocks. So let's go through and see what happened here. Let's see here. Aha! So the problem that came up is that our uh, before we added tiles there, we actually don't want to add that now. Um, we actually want to make sure that that stays nothing. We'll go through and just remove that real quick. We'll come back. Maybe we should specify that that is zero. Oop, that's right. We want 
to make sure that we don't even draw anything. There we go. There we go. Whoop. Our NPC seems to have not been loaded. So let's see here. Now. Also, uh, update the scroll position for them. That shouldn't be needed. There are a few changes we'll need to make here, so let's see. That NPC sprite. Okay. Should have worked. But it did not in fact. So I'm gonna guess that the reason for that is because we need to implement scrolling. So let's come to our base NPCs and in here we'll want to make sure that we update them. So what we can actually do to simplify this a bit further is we can take a lot of the scrolling stuff from our um, main guy and we can add that all into um and then add that into the base entity class so let's come here and we'll add that into update we have that there and here we are so this should all be added in right here because everything is going to fall. Um, everything's going to have some very basic things that it uh, runs into. Um, but a lot of this we're not going to worry about. We're just going to leave the scrolling all in there. The downside to that, however, oh no, that actually works because all of that. Okay, so come down here to update, update all of that. Now the one thing to note is that the map, all of that will not be changed. Oh, that should have been. Maybe they are wrapping it around. So I know that there is a wrapping function. changed on me. Uh, t -t 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 drawing 2D stuff. Off-screen drawing. There we are.
didn't realize they had views. Hmm, might have been useful to use that. Huh. Forgot that SFML had these. We did an entire scrolling system ourselves. Oh well, we'll keep that going for now. Um, obviously another way we could do this is scrolling the um, whole thing with this view stuff. So I'm not going to actually do that though. What we're going to do is we're going to continue what we were doing before by um, utilizing this. So what we need to do, because I just figured out the problem, is our entity is being, our NPC is being drawn at a um, far off screen position. So all of the entities actually need to be updated with this scroll position. So what we're going to actually want to do is we're going to want to come over to entity.h and we're going to want to make this static. Um, not that. That. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that it's the same across all of our entities. Um, and that means that we'll be able to do things such as okay. to make that entity. There we go. And the reason we want to do that is we want to actually, um, there we go. We want to make sure that all of our entities are, um, there we go, or not, uh, map. here, make sure that we initialize that. symbol, but it's not external symbol. Unless it thinks it's a, it is because it's not declared anywhere else. Let's try this. That would be kind of silly though.
Yeah, so that's not right. Oh, that would be why. There we go. Okay, so now that we have that, what we can do is we can go through and update the positions of everything here. And so, now what we can do is we can track all of that a little bit better now. Okay. So now that we have that, we need to come over to base NPC. And what we need to do is he needs to be offset by the scroll. So first off, let's just show what this does. It doesn't really do anything right now. Um, it just keeps everything the way it is. The big thing that we'll be able to do, however, is we'll be able to update this guy's position here. Sorry, not that guy. Where is base NPC? So we'll be able to update these guys' positions based on that. So what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to give them an X and Y. So real quick, let me just add in filter NPC. NPC2, clean that up just a bit, a little bit. And MOB, mob1, mob2. So there's that a little bit better. And we're going to go ahead and have a float uh, SF vector 2F position. And what this position is going to do is it is going to have allow us to um, track position on our own. So this position is equal to and every time we update set position to this position dot x plus the entity scroll dot x and there we go Last thing that needs to happen is that needs to be subtracted actually, not added. Duh. There we go. So now we have our entity. Now the big thing to note is that uh, they are too far up. So what we're going to do now is we are going to make sure that the entity is drawn a little bit down for those. So let's come over here to map. We come up, we have that, and we'll add on 32. 32. 32. And the reason for that is because they're not going to be falling to the ground, so they don't aren't affected by that. And we don't really want them to be. We don't want to put that in entity because that's going to make things a little bit messier. We just want to kind of do that. And there we go. And if we come down here, have our other entity. Let me kind of flip them around. And we'll go ahead and we'll do the exact same thing to the mobs. So mobs or a subclass of enemy, and this is going to have the exact same thing as base NPC, but we track the position separately in order to um, in order to make sure that we can more easily uh, update everything. So that, and then we take 
this. Now, of course, you can look into using the views that I mentioned before um, from SFML. They're a little bit easier to do. This is just a really nice way to go through and show this um, on how you would do this without uh, anything special being used. Um, so we don't have to worry about library specifics. This is a way that you're able to go through and do this in just about any programming language. And it kind of just shows you the basics of all of this. So we have all of that. Um, yeah. So uh, that's pretty much it. Um, there's not a whole lot more that really needs to be added. Obviously, you could do things like uh, add in more backgrounds and such. And you'd be able to go through and scroll a whole variety of different things. You could do trees and stuff. Um, really, it's limitless. Um, you can make your levels bigger, smaller, or whatever else. You'll notice that they all load pretty fast. Um, let's go through them real quick. What we'll do is we will uh, update the save game stuff. So let's go through and uh, where is our save game? Here it is, our save system. So right now this um, updates our, this is just our little uh, test save stuff. Uh, not a whole lot that really needs to be updated other than uh, making sure that when we quit, we save the position currently. Um, so let's come down here and find out where we save. And you'll notice we don't save in here. So what we're going to want to do is when we uh, quit, we'll want to make sure we save. So we go to the main menu, save. And what this should do is this should dot x is equal to this get guy position x do the same thing for the y's and if we come over here now we can of course come right here we'll quit and when we come back that's a new one. I haven't seen that bug before. So we'll come back here. Hopefully I get that in the right section. And the last thing we also need to do is we need to make sure that we are adding on the scroll. So we'll do entity scroll.x. And do the same thing for the y. Forgot about that. That's why it looks so weird. So go through, do that. that our guy seems to have vanished. And this could be due to just how we're saving things, so let's go through and see what the position actually says. So that could vary a little bit different. So we'll just go ahead and open up this in Sublime. You'll notice that our uh, position is definitely not right. So let's go through restart the game, delete the save file, and see what it says. And now that we've done that, let's see what it says now. So that seems better, so let's go through and play. And that's where the problem comes in. 
So what we want to do is we want to go through and we make sure that uh, we are updating everything properly. So let's see here. Ah, and what we want to make sure we do is that we reset the scroll every time. So. because it is a static variable that needs to be updated. And that should fix that. And there we go. We've got our basic save file again all set up. So it'll save where we leave off. Um, so we can go through and do whatever. And then quit come back and we're back to where we were. So there's a very, very basic uh, way that you can do a simple platformer on SFML using uh, not really any of the library specific things. All we're doing is drawing and that's it. You know, we're not using any of the special features that are available. And of course we can talk to people and everything and destroy enemies. And yeah. So, um, any other things that people want to see? I mean, there's not a whole lot more to add to this. Um, I don't really have anything more specific that I'm, you know, thinking of adding, at least right now. Um, yeah, any uh, suggestions on what people want to see? I'm open to just about anything. I'm just uh, keeping an eye on everything after that little scare there. Making sure don't get too high. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty much all there is to it. Um, there's not a whole lot of extra stuff that really needs to be added in this. Um, it works, you know, fine. You can jump around, variable jump heights and such. Yeah. We can, of course, run through. I know it's pretty basic. There's not a whole lot of special stuff in here. So, yeah. So, um, that's pretty much it for today's. Um, really, at this point, we have a fully functional game library. Um, it's all pretty basic and simple to use. There's not a whole lot of things that need to be changed. You can use this as a template for many of your games. Um, if you guys go through and create some cool stuff. Um, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait a few minutes, see if people have questions about anything, anything that people want to ask. Um, and then after that, I'm going to head out. Um, next week's big focus on videos is going to the next week's video is going to be uh, taking a little bit of a step back. We're going to go back to a totally different game genre. Um, you'll remember I did a breakout clone a while back. It was a very, very basic breakout clone we're going to go through and we're going to make that again but this time we're going to focus on how we do it with this new library um, that means we won't be tiled we won't be using tiled and we're going to focus on um, maybe making some more randomized levels with everything um, the other thing is after that what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up the series um, we'll be five episodes in by that point so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend another five episodes going back through all of these games polishing them making them look nice and then releasing them for everybody to play um, making sure they're you know at least somewhat, somewhat fun um, and so the idea will be to add in some nice little flares and stuff add like a simple story to the RPG and a simple story to the to jumper um, and all of that because I know a lot of the games so far have been very kind of just crudely put together so we're gonna go through we're gonna polish them all and that'll be probably another five episodes and then um, after that I'm going to go through and start planning out a I guess second season at that point um, so if you guys have suggestions on things you'd like to see in the next season of things um, go ahead and let me know um, I'm currently researching into maybe using a different language or maybe doing something new with C++, like uh, going more into OpenGL or something. Um, I'm kind of looking around at that. But for right now, um, this has been uh, making Jumper. Uh, the code, let me go ahead and make sure that's all on GitHub for everyone. Um, but yeah, so 
here is our final product, no questions or anything, then I'm going to um, go ahead and head on off for the day. So, yeah. Um, again, next week we're going to be working on a very simple breakout clone. Um, nothing, you know, too fancy. It's just going to be the basic of what we had before. Um, so you'll notice right now we're stuck. And the reason for that is because of the fact that we were... And that's something, of course, you could fix as well um, by uh, going through and doing a similar thing in here. Let's go through and fix that real quick. And again, if you guys have any questions, please go ahead and say them, shout them out at me. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. I just want to make sure that go ahead and answer those as we can. Alright, well, that is it for today then. Um, expect the YouTube videos to be up uh, shortly uh, hereafter. Um, it takes me a little bit of time to get them to upload, but once they are, they'll be online. Um, again, next week we're going to go over making a breakout clone again, and then the next five episodes we'll be going through and polishing the games and showing how you can make them look nicer. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah, happy game, Devin.